Now then, we're back in the workshop. It's rip snortingly hot out there, so you'll have to excuse the flowery shirt. I know it's a little bit out of the norm, but there you go. We live in strange times. And because of that, and because the energy price is going whoosh like that, Lee came up with this idea. Yeah, and um, I was talking to Owen about it, and I lent him a bit of equipment which will probably help him with his experiments. But here's the idea that basically a lot of people have got solar but no battery backup and the battery backup is expensive, very expensive, and it's total refit, so they didn't bother. So Lee came up with this idea of a backwards method of providing power for certain items within your system. And this can even work for, if we're going to get power cuts this winter, you could set something like this up just to run, for instance, the central heating. Just the, uh, the electricity part of your central heating. Like, for instance, uh, in a, uh, a wood heating situation, you want uh, something to run maybe the pump controller. And with a gas boiler, you want something to run the, um, the programmer for the gas boiler. Yeah, not actually heating with the electricity, but just running the, the systems that allow the, uh, the boilers to work. Okay, so that's it. Or you can just have it to run your fridge. So we're going to zoom down. I've collected a few things together. And this is not a how-to, it's a here's a thought. Yeah, there you go, there's a thought think about it and see if you can adapt it for your own circumstances. Right, let's crack on. The workspace is quite loaded today. Let's move this bench out of the way. So what we've got is a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt charger. So on the charger, positive goes to positive except that is not the positive, that's the positive because it's marked red there. Negative goes to negative. Fair enough. And this charger actually tells you when you've got it the wrong way around. And there's a little light there saying polarity correct. Okay, so we can plug that into the mains. Yep. And it charges. Okay, so what happens if we put a timer on that, that plug there on the mains? Then this charger will only charge when you set, say for instance, between half past nine in the morning and five in the evening. It's charging then when your solar panels are doing something. And of course that window varies throughout the year. The middle of summer we're talking maybe 8 till 7 or 8 till 8 depending which way your panels are facing. In the middle of winter we're really talking 8 till 3. Okay so there's that. That is on a timer. And here's a timer with an override switch. Yeah, and this is 24 hours. So we can set that up and the charger works when you want it to. Okay. Right, we've got a battery. Now I've dug out of supplies over here a little 350 watt 12 volt battery inverter. It's a Victron and at the moment there it's off. Okay so I'm just going to switch this charger off for the moment. So the inverter gets connected 
to the battery. Actually, it doesn't want to go there. It wants to go here. Positive to positive, negative to negative. If in doubt, double check and then check again. Because we don't want to be dealing with the blue smoke dragon, do we? So red to red, which is the positive. Okay, now all these connections you'll need to put something like um, where's that other code? Uh, battery terminal grease or Vaseline or something like that on them. See that spark? I had that in my hand. Okay, this is the negative. Yep. And inverters have got capacitors in them. So as I just briefly touched that negative with that negative cable, because I was fiddling around with this bolt, then we charged the capacitors up. So when I connected the inverter again, the capacitor is already charged. Okay, so now then we've got a light here as a uh, a load, and this is the output of that inverter. So we'll switch the inverter on and the lights on. Can we see the lights on? We can see the lights on. The light is running off the inverter from the battery. Okay? So maybe that's just your television and it only runs in the evening. We've got a little bit of a, a dodgy connection there. That's a bit better. So during the day, the battery is being charged. The television can run off the inverter if it needs to, or the light, or the fridge, or what have you. It's all relative to the size of these bits of equipment. Okay, so the battery is charging at the moment at about 2 amps. The inverter is running the light. The battery switches off. Let's switch it off at the mains here. Not the battery, the charger switches off and the inverter keeps running. That way you can charge your own or you can save your own solar generated electricity during the day and use it at night. And one of these little LED two wire, not a three wire, two wire um, voltmeters, digital voltmeters, brilliant. You can have that in your kitchen or whatever, on a shelf, uh, and you can see exactly what your battery voltage is doing. If that shows 12 volts, then you know that the battery is fairly well flat. Okay, so that's a bit of inner knowledge. So now all I want to talk to you about really is the the size of things. That's a 350 watt inverter. You wouldn't want to think about trying to run a normal domestic fridge off that. Because a normal domestic fridge might run at 50 watts or 100 watts but it draws up to 10 times that to start for one second. So you might want to use a bigger inverter like that one over there that claims to be 3000 watts but I would only really be wanting to draw 600 watts off that. That's the one that I've got to fix yet. Yeah, I was given that. It's I've never even looked at it yet but maybe it's got a simple fault, maybe not. 
So you've got to be careful about what load you run and the same with the battery. Yeah? You don't want to take the battery below 12 volts. Keep the battery in a healthy condition. So all these three or four systems need to be balanced. Okay, so therefore, let's say for instance this light is a 10 watt light. So therefore, if you're going to run that for 10 hours, yes, that's 100 watts. That's not very much. A fridge, just depending where it is and uh, how big it is and whatnot, you'll just have to work it through. And a little bit of trial and error, but when you're doing trial and error, just make sure that you're watching stuff. Don't just switch stuff on and expect it to work how you imagine. There's always things that are not quite as you, as I say, as you imagine. Um, terminal grease or Vaseline on all connections. These crocodile clips for the the charger are um, are not ideal, but all right for experiments. Uh, even if you do cover them in uh, terminal grease, you've got that little contact area. Whereas a good spade co um, eye connector, greased up and bolted up tight is a good idea. So there you go. And then just on top of that, the item that Owen is experimenting with is a UPS inverter. Now these are used in offices and stuff like that and basically they have a couple of those gel type batteries in there and they're a charger and an inverter all packed together and when the mains goes in the mains input the mains go straight through to the load, the output uh, but it also charges the batteries and when the mains disconnects it runs the load. So it's a bit similar to this situation but slightly more sophisticated and of course if you had one of those uh, UPS supply units then the first thing to do is take the top off, take the gel batteries out and bring leads out and put them to a, a decent flooded battery. Yeah, yeah. I mean if you use a leisure battery Remember, leisure batteries are only just a bit better than car batteries. But, you know, a big one, you're going to be able to run things for a longer time. So don't overdo it. Don't draw too much. Don't, um, don't push any bit of equipment beyond 50% of its capacity. And you'll end up storing your own solar electricity and using it. And with electricity now at, what is it? 40 pence a kilowatt hour then this sort of situation especially if you've got three quarters of the bits kicking around at home give it a go and let me know how you get on uh, just be aware of all the safety issues you know um, good connections don't build up heat don't overdo things don't put inverters in silly places where they're going to get red hot and they get covered in in cushions or or pussycats sit on them and stop the airflow. Yeah, same with the chargers. You need everything to be in a cool, dedicated space, bottom of a cupboard, maybe with a bit of a vent, that sort of thing, just so the kids and the cats and the dogs don't start knocking it all about. Hopefully, you've uh, you'll take this idea and maybe run with it. So I will catch up with you soon. Cheers for now.